So, the other night, I was laying in bed before I went to sleep when my wife came across a YouTube clip from the show Pawn Stars where a man brought in an amazing and rare piece of NASCAR history, which was Dale Earnhardt's fire suit from the 1993 Coca-Cola 600, and it was autographed too. This item appraised for $20,000 in Pawn Stars, which, phew, I'm good there. It's cool, but it's not that cool for me. Well, what I noticed the most from this was a stat put up by the History Channel. Now, they could have mentioned anything about Dale Earnhardt. They could have discussed him winning the Daytona 500 after 20 attempts. They could have mentioned that at the time of airing in 2014, he was one of only two men to win seven Cup Series championships. But nah, they decided to bring up his death. And even at that, they got the race entirely wrong. But that's an entirely different conversation. But it was at this point when something occurred to me. Casual NASCAR fans only know and would watch NASCAR for one thing, sadly, and that's the wrecks. So why do so many people enjoy seeing cars crash? I mean, I will admit, some guilty pleasures of mine lately on YouTube have included the hilariously funny races at Rockford Speedway of one, spectator drags, and two, figure eight trailer races in which both can cause pure chaos and destruction to be. Look at that! And then on top of this, one of my other guilty pleasure YouTube channels to watch is Komodo Gaming, specifically his videos where he takes what looks like asphalt late models with paint schemes from NASCAR and sends them down a mountain with nothing but the intent of destroying every last one of them to find a winner. It's purely awesome content. What do we, oh no! Uh oh, this uh, might have been a bad idea when I think the five just exploded. Oh, and I still have a chance. Oh, there's the 24, huh? Get going, get going. Oh no! Okay, it's a race between me and the 24. Hold on. Uh oh, I might actually be able to get a win here. On, uh, go, 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 go! I'm like dragging on the the chassis, like the frame and everything is on the ground. And uh oh. Uh, I got a left rear tire. Oh, I just watched an explosion up there. Now, likewise, at one point or another, any NASCAR fan of a video game has probably drove backwards for, well, nothing more than to cause chaos and destruction. Why do we do this? Well, it's fun. It's cool. It satisfies some nerve in our brain that craves danger and excitement. It's a very similar endorphin that is exaggerated when a person watches a horror movie. Now, in my case, I don't really care to watch those, but I have been on a binge of watching World War II movies as of late. Going into these, I know there's going to be death. I know there's going to be some blood and gore, and sensitive situations, but I know that. I'm expecting this to happen. However, when I watch NASCAR, while myself as a diehard NASCAR fan will look forward to each race for the sake of the sport and other aspects of it, there's a reason why casual fans are more likely to tune into races at Talladega and Daytona, and quite honestly, it's because of the pure possibility and really expectations of seeing a death-defying crash in the big one. Trouble. This is gonna hurt. Keep your fingers crossed. Wrecks like the one that Jeff Bodine narrowly survived at Daytona serve as a reminder of how dangerous a sport is. And back in the years prior to Dale Earnhardt's death in 2001, many drivers in NASCAR's past typically had their careers cut short due to these crashes which so many casual fans think about when they think of NASCAR. Now back in the 80s and the 90s, you get a 15 car wreck of about one to two cars going in the air, you're worried about how many are even alive, let alone going to be racing the next week. Whereas if you fast forward to 2008, Texas Motor Speedway. While drivers are qualifying for their starting position in the upcoming race on Sunday, those in the garage, in the grandstands, and thousands watching along at home on television were taken back when Michael McDowell crashed hard in the turn one wall, flipping violently free to turn, but the many surprise and joy, he got out and walked away. Since then, many drivers have walked away from these crazy and death-defying accidents to the point that race fans have kind of become relaxed. We've become insensitive to these kind of wrecks. We really expect everyone to be okay. We just have grown an expectation that the driver will always get out, but as we know, that's still not always the case. Now, while there have still been drivers suffer some pretty severe injuries on the track, there still has not been an on-track death in NASCAR since Dale Earnhardt in 2001. 
We've gone nearly 20 years without losing a driver in a top 3 series of NASCAR, and while that's great, it can also be scary. Now what I mean by this is that we have fans of racing who can't comprehend the idea that in an instant we could still lose someone we know and love on the track. While it hasn't happened in NASCAR, it still happened elsewhere. In 2011, IndyCar lost the Indy 500 winner that season in the finale race when Dan Weldon lost his life in the insane lap 11 crash at Las Vegas. In 2013, we lost NASCAR driver Jason Leffler at just 37 years old after an accident at a dirt track race. And then in the conclusion of this year's 2020 Daytona 500, we all thought that we had seen the end of Ryan Newman. For me, who was in attendance that night, it was scary. I grew up watching this man for most of my young life. I grew up racing against him virtually through NASCAR 2005 Chase for the Cup, and of course, in the storyline of that game, he is the one who, of course, gives you your big break in the racing. So through this, and just by watching the man over the last few years, you can't help but have this close respect and love for Ryan Newman. So for me to have been there that night, thinking at the end of that event that we had lost Ryan Newman, it was just something I never expected going into it. And it's a feeling that I never want to have after another race again. I recall before that moment that me and my wife had both said before that we would love to finally see a true big one in person and up close. Well, we had seen some big wrecks before, but from afar. But this one, well, it happened right in front of us. And now, I'm perfectly content never seeing another wreck like this ever again. Fast forward to Kansas 2020. Ryan Priest is involved in a vicious accident, and I could tell then how I had been affected since Newman's wreck earlier the year, and NASCAR 2 for that matter. Red Flag immediately came out, and I just froze and said, oh my god. But then, my discomfort was changed to relief when I heard Priest say, Fantastic. It's Ryan talking. So now I raise the question to the casual racing fans. Do you really want to watch NASCAR for the wrecks? Well, yes you do. And that's not your fault either. Heck, in 2020, Fox was even using Ryan Newman's crash as a way of advertising the season. So really, media is as much responsible for this infatuation of crashes as much as anyone else. They make it look good, they advertise with it, they, they make you think this is what you want to see. Heck, a lot of people I've met, if you ask them to go watch a lower series race, well, they'd probably agree to hopefully see more wrecks due to the driver's inexperience. So, before you get excited and cheer for the next crash, because some do, especially when a driver they dislike is involved, consider these questions. Do you really enjoy seeing this? Are you prepared for what could happen from one crash? I know I'm not. This is a dangerous sport, and we must respect it as such. And that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.